The Quilt Sandwich Yardage Calculator is one of my favorite features of the Quilt Sandwich app because it allows me to do everything in finished sizes and not have to worry about any of the magic numbers that are needed to add seam allowances to shapes such as triangles or quarter square triangles. All of the calculations are done for me. All I need to do is to put in the number of pieces that I need, the size that I need, and the shape that I need, and the yardage calculator tells me exactly how how much fabric I need to buy. And not only that, it allows me to control every setting of how my fabric is used, from the width of the fabric that I'm using, to the seam allowances, to how much I need for squaring up, for shrinkage, one-way designs, you name it, the yardage calculator takes it into account. Let me show you how the yardage calculator works. To enter the yardage calculator, tap yardage calculator on the home screen. The first thing you'll see on the left hand side of the screen all of the different settings that you can change when your yardage is calculated and over on the right hand side of your iPad you will see a cutting diagram which changes as you change the information on the left. So just reading from the left hand side of the screen let me just orient you a little bit to what the information is. At the top you will see a purple rectangle which tells you the amount of yards that you need for your particular piece and then you'll see a dollar sign. If you choose to input the price per yard or the price per fat quarter into the yardage calculator it will tell you how much that particular piece needs. So if you're working off of a budget you'll be able to keep track of where you're at in your project costs. To the right of that you'll see a button called Quick Calc which I will talk about at the end of this video. It's a quick way for you to do calculations at the cutting table in your local quilt store. Then below the purple rectangle, you will see the five components of a quilt. Pieces, borders, binding, backing, and batting. Each one of these particular components has their own set of unique measurements and own set of unique characteristics that you can choose that will determine how much fabric you need to buy. And I will go over all of those choices. Then below the uh, headings, you will see different icons that you can select that correspond to those different five components. Then followed by the icons, you will see where you put in the finished measurements for your pieces. Now, they will vary depending upon what it is that you have chosen to be measured, but the measurements follow next. Then you will see where you can change the seam allowance. You can make it be as small as you want or as large as you want. So if you are needing to be very, very careful with your fabric because you don't have that much left and it's just the perfect one and an eighth of an inch seam allowance will allow you to use it, you can change the seam allowance to one eighth of an inch and it will take that into account in the yardage calculations. Or let's say that you're making one of those rag quilts and you need a half inch so you can snip all of the seams. You can go ahead and change the seam allowance there and the yardage calculator will take that into account. Below the seam allowance you will see the yard goods section and here you would put in the width of the fabric that you are using or you can also select fat quarters. So if you happen to find a great sale on 108 inch wide backing fabric, you can go ahead and take this slider and change it to 108 inches wide or if you found something less than that, you can go ahead and put that particular measurement in as well manually. So the width of the fabric is a very flexible field for you. Below the fabric information is the piece layout. And there you can see two choices, least fabric and one-way design. Least fabric means that you are going to let the yardage calculator determine the best way to use your fabric. The calculations that are done behind the seams are done both on the lengthwise grain and the crosswise grain. The one that uses the least amount of fabric is the choice that is presented to you in the cutting diagram if you choose least amount of fabric. But let's say that you find this really great one-way design, you can tap the one-way design button and it will orient the piece so that the width of your piece is on the width of the fabric. And you can just double check that that's how you want the design to flow in your design. So the cutting diagram is a key element to understanding the changes for the settings that the yardage calculator is using. 
Below the piece layout, you will see the option for you to change the allowances for shrinkage and squaring up. If you're like me, I tend to make a lot of cutting mistakes, and so I tend to be more generous on my allowances, and I add more inches per yard just to give me some more wiggle room. You can change the allowances by tapping in the box to bring up the keyboard. You can use the sliders. You can tap on the arrows. However you choose, the allowances can be customized. Now notice that under the allowance percentage, it tells you how many inches per yard the yardage calculator is adding. In this particular example, an 11% allowance adds four inches per yard. So what that means is that if I was going to purchase two yards, I would would have a total of eight inches added to my fabric purchase. So you can take a look at how your cutting diagram is extra fabric you're buying, which you can tell by what is left is in the red and the yellow. Now let's say that I need to buy two yards of fabric. So let me change the number of pieces so that I need to buy two yards of fabric. Because I want to show you that on the cutting diagram, you don't need to do the math of how many total inches are added on the allowance. If you look over to the right, it says there's an 11% allowance for this piece, and that means that about 8 inches is included in that 2 yards fabric purchase. So don't be afraid to play around with the allowances because the cutting diagram will tell you everything that you need to know. And then finally, underneath the allowance and the shrinkage and squaring up a section, you will see the ability for you to enter in the price per yard. And again, you use the sliders or the data entry function with the keyboard or the arrows to change the cost per yard. And so these two yards at $8.07 per yard is going to cost me $16.14. So that's a quick overview of the settings that you can change with every component of the quilt that you are making. So let me go over how to read the piece information. So for pieces, those are selected by the dark purple highlight on that particular button. The first one is for squares and rectangles. And you can see that all four sides are highlighted because all four sides are important in that calculation. So if I change it to um, rectangles, you can see, let me change the number of pieces here. That's kind of a goofy diagram. You can see that the finished width is three. My length is five inches and I need 33 pieces. And that means that I need a total of two yards. My yard goods is 12 inches wide. So let's go ahead and make that be 44 because that's a more realistic number. So you can see how easy it is to change things, and now I only need 5 eighths of a yard. If I want to quickly switch the width and the length, to sometimes that makes a difference in how much fabric you need, I can just tap the little wiggly arrow and that will change the width and the length. And also if I have a one-way design, I can come down to the piece layout, tap one-way design, and you can see that it's there. The calculator tells you that it's placed the piece on the width of the fabric, but there was no change in the amount of fabric that you needed or how the piece was laid out because the most efficient way to do it for the number of pieces was the least amount of fabric. So sometimes it won't change, but I assure you that you can trust the calculator in terms of how it is laying out the fabric, and you can always verify that the calculator is doing exactly what you want it to do by looking at the cutting diagram. What follows the squares and rectangles is half square triangles. And you can see that the bold line indicates the side measurement that the calculator is looking for. It's looking for the finished length. And in this particular case, I want a five inch finished triangle. Now over on the cutting diagram, take a look. It says I need 33 half square triangles and I cut them five and seven eighths by five and seven eighths. Isn't that like awesome? I don't need to remember to add seven eighths of an inch to my finished size in order to know how to cut my triangles. And I don't need to take that into account in my fabric calculations because the yardage calculator has included all of that for me. Now, if you're the kind of person who likes to cut their triangles oversized, you can do that a couple of different ways. You can just increase the allowances, and you can see as I'm doing that, it gives you more fabric to work with, or you can incrementally change the finished length of your triangle. Let's say that I'm going to make it be five and a half. 
And now I need 7 eighths of a yard, but that allows me to cut my triangles oversized and trim them down with the ruler that I like to work with. So the yardage calculator allows you to work with your favorite tools and favorite triangle piecing method. What follows the half square triangles is the quarter square triangles. And you can see on the right hand side of the quarter triangle symbol that outside edge is most important and you can change all of the settings that you could before Does that affect my yardage. What follows quarter square triangles is corner square triangles which are used for diagonal settings when your blocks are set on point. Again the bold purple line indicates what measurement is most important. That's the measurement that you change in the yardage calculator and it will tell you that in this particular case for a five and a half inch block on point you need to cut your square four and three fourths by four and three fourths and it tells you how many strips to cut and how to subcut them as well. So the number of strips and the subcuts are always notated on the cutting diagram. I didn't mention that earlier, but all of that information is available for all of the pieces. What follows corner squares is the setting triangles that you need for the sides to make a straight end. And you can see by the bold line what measurement is important for the yardage calculator, so it's easy to provide that information based upon your design. And then the last symbol is for custom triangles, which are triangles that you can design using the triangle calculator found under Help and Utilities, or you may have designed a special triangle based upon your design. So any right angle triangle, typically you would be cutting a rectangle, you can see how you would need to cut your fabrics and how much fabric you need for a custom triangle. So that takes care of the piece options. For borders, you can have the longer length of your border be at the top, you can have the longer length of your border be on the side, or you can choose a mitered border option. Any of those options have different piece lengths that you would have to cut, and the yardage calculator takes care of determining all of that by taking into account the finished width of your border and the finished width and length of your top without the borders. Remember to add in extra inches once you add your borders. The yardage calculator takes care of all of that for you. If you choose to always cut longer borders by folding your fabric on the crosswise screen, that option is available. But if you don't mind piecing your borders, you can choose the lengthwise setting and you can see that the calculator will tell you how to cut those particular pieces. For binding, you can choose straight of grain binding, which is symbolized by the square, or you can choose mitered binding, and it will tell you how much fabric you need to cut your fabric on the bias. For backing, the calculator is able to put your quilt on one piece of fabric for the backing. It will do that. So I'm going to show you how that works by just changing this to 108 inches and you can see that you would need to buy three and one quarter yards to have a one piece backing. But let's move it back to the 44 inches because I want to show you a couple other things on the backing calculator. You can choose to have your calculations done with a vertical seam or a horizontal seam. And you can see that the number of pieces that I need changes and the number of yards that I need changes depending upon what seam direction I select. So you can minimize your fabric purchases based upon how you piece your backing. The other thing is that the backing calculator also includes the allowances. So it's adding five inches per yard. And you can see on the calculator that it's adding in another 52 inches. If you want that big of a piece of a scrap, you can certainly go ahead and purchase that. Or you can take your allowances down. In this particular case, I can take it down to 3%. And I can still fit my quilt on my backing with a four and a half inch overhang. I've added an additional six inches in my five and three quarter yards, and I think that that's pretty good. So I can visually manipulate all of the different settings when I go to purchase my backing fabric. And then for batting, if you need to seam batting, you can choose a horizontal or a vertical seam, or if your batting is wide enough, you can put it all on one big piece. You can also specify the amount of overhang as well. 
So this would work for battings that you need to piece together. You'll know exactly how big you need to piece your batting scraps. You can verify that a package batting measurements will give you the amount of space that you want in terms of the overhang or you can buy it off of the roll. So the batting calculator allows you to, again, control how much batting you are buying and thus help you stay within your budget. Now let me just quickly show you Quick Calc. And to get to Quick Calc, you're just gonna tap the Quick Calc button and out pops a set of wheels. Now these wheels are customized to what feature you are working with in the yardage calculator. So the wheels that are showing here are for the batting calculator. So I need to put in the width of my fabric or the width of my batting, which I'm gonna say is 96 inches. My quilt width and length is 72 by 90 and I want a four and a half inch overhang. And it quickly tells me that I need two and three quarter yards. But let's say that I want to do a quick back of the envelope backing calculation. I'm going to tap quick calc and up comes the information that I need to change for the backing, which again is the fabric width, the quilt width and length, and now I need with a four and a half inch overhang and I need five and three quarter yards. Let me show you how the piece one works. And I'm gonna look at half square triangles. And you can see that the information the calculator is looking for is the width of my fabric, the finished length of my half square triangle, just like it is in the more sophisticated one and the number of pieces. And I think I'm gonna change that number of pieces to be 59. So now I need one yard and you can see how the cutting diagram changed that information as well. So if you are in the fabric store and you need to make a quick calculation and you know that you don't need to change the default settings of the yardage calculator, then quick calc is a good way for you to do that. If you're not sure what the default settings are, the first time that you enter into the app, it's going to be a quarter inch seam, 44 inch wide fabric, a 10% allowance. So you'll see those default settings come up. And if you don't like them, you can obviously go in and change them if you pull up the more sophisticated calculator. So that's it for the yardage calculator for Quilt Sandwich. I just love this feature because I don't need to remember any of the magic formulas, pull out any charts, do any type of math whatsoever in order to figure out how much fabric I needed. And the truth be told, if I was told that I needed to know math in order to be a quilter, I probably wouldn't have attempted it because math is not something that I am very good at. But with Quilt Sandwich, I can spend my time designing and sewing, which is where I would like to spend my time rather than trying to figure out if I've got any math errors or not. So I hope that you have fun playing with the yardage calculator and customizing the settings to what you need for each one of your quilt projects so that you can use your fabric the way you want to. If you have any questions about the iPad yardage calculator or Quilt Sandwich, please go to our website quiltsandwichapp.com to send us an email.